Okay, so this is my part two for what does it mean to consecrate ourselves to Our Lady? And I don't think I mentioned this in my first talk, and this is why I want to mention it, okay? But when a person is consecrated, it means that they're set aside for a holy purpose. A chalice, a pattern, okay, that we use, that the priests use at Mass, it may not be used for ordinary drinking, okay? That would be considered like a sacrilege because it was blessed, okay, in a very special way and set aside specifically to contain the wine that would become the precious blood of our Lord and for the host that would be consecrated and become the body of our Lord. And it is not to be used otherwise. So when we have ourselves consecrated for Our Lady, we're putting ourselves at her disposal, okay, to be used for a holy purpose. And this can seem a little bit strange, okay, because above all, we want to be set aside for God, but we're imitating God. God chose to come to us through Mary. It was on her fiat, okay? And so we are simply doing the same by coming to God through Mary and knowing that she will help us, okay, to be able to be um, as pleasing as possible to him, okay? And we do this not out of a fear of God, okay? It, you know, God is a loving Father, and it doesn't mean we can't go directly to the Father and speak to Him, okay? But it is this willingness to surrender it all through Mary, to perfect it, and to, um, and to bring joy to the heart of Jesus, and, and to God the Father, who chose her, okay, and gave her to us um, our, as, a, as a last gift, okay? And we knew that, that usually that's the most precious gift, is when a person's on their deathbed. And that last thing is the only thing that they have they're holding on to. And now they can surrender that to you. So we see this um, in the gift of Our Lady um, from Christ. We also don't do it, okay, out of a selfish gain. Okay, it's not for, um, you know, me, myself, and I. But it is to bring, it's to honor Our Lady as did Our Lord. It's also, it's entrusting. Um, trusting that it will give glory to God who gave her to us. You know, if he was able, and he was, he was able to choose her and form her. None of us can form our own mother and choose our own mother. And he did, and he was able to make her so perfect. And then he was able to give her to us. And when we accept her as our mother and honor her as our queen and and. And look to her as our, as our, like our mistress, okay, the one we're going to follow the example of, and her lead and her guidance. It gives a, a joy and to God. It's you know like if I, I, I've heard this. This is not me making it up, okay, but because <laughs> this is too good for me. But if I was an artist, okay, and I um, painted an absolutely gorgeous picture, and then you came into the museum, and all you did was, um, you know. To talk to me, uh, and and never looked at my artwork, and and never gave it praise, never even recognized it. Okay, uh, the artist would be hurt. Okay, and it's the same thing. Like Mary is the masterpiece um, of humanity, and when we are willing to honor her, we honor the master who created her and formed her and gave her the graces to say yes, um, as she had the free will to do so and, and cooperated with that grace. Um, okay, and then I wanted to mention that when we have that devotion, Mary never takes it for herself. Okay, I remember my first time ever having to practice devotion to Mary. I actually, you know, I had a great love for Our Lady of Fatima since especially seventh grade when her statue and the mission had been given at our parish. And I was very devoted to praying the rosary, but I didn't really have a devotion to her. I had a devotion to her message, which was, our Lord is so offended, you know, and, and to pray and make sacrifices. And so that rosary was 
you know, um, all about making satisfaction to our Lord and consoling his heart. And, um, and this was the means that he wishes to use it. I was all about it. But when I, um, right before I, I entered my senior year of high school, I had visited our community. And I realized that I was called to our community. And so the person who was in charge, named Mother Mobulis, gave me a book and, and said, next year, then, you know, you could, be, you could be admitted to the community. So I had taken the book home, and I really hadn't looked at it. And it was either Imitation of Mary or Mary, I hope, I really don't know what the title was. It was one of those, though. And um, I realized after about two months had gone by, I'd never looked at that book. So I was sitting in bed. That's usually where I did all my studying. <laughs> and I opened the book, and... One of the first things I read is that, like, one is not really having a, a, a real prayer life or relationship with God who doesn't acknowledge and talk to his mother. And I'm thinking, I never talked to his mother. <laughs> so I remember getting out of bed, okay, and um, kneeling on the floor, and then telling God, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't want to offend you, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk to you right now. I'm just, I'm just going to talk to your mother. And then I, I didn't really know what to say, so I just said hi. <laughs> and I remember that I felt like heaven was in my room. It was such a beautiful experience of God that um, I, I never forgot. And it was really my, one of my first experiences of God that I ever experienced. And I, when I reflect on that, I just think, isn't it amazing that my first experience of God was the first time I talked to Mary. I felt that heaven was very amused. <laughs> I felt that God was very amused. Um, but it was so neat when I looked at that connection. In my religious life, I realized that any time that I decide, okay, to really like devote this month, especially to um, praying more to Mary or doing something in her honor, my attentiveness to God increases amazing. I mean, twofold, threefold. I just can't get over every single time you go to Mary. She is only there in the sense of being to be truly a mother, okay, who wants to bring you to the fullness of, of, of happiness and goodness, okay, and bringing you to the throne of God. So you never have to worry that you're going to offend God, okay, or leave him out. Mary will be drawing you right to our Lord. And <clears throat> I do want to say, though, that my devotion um, has been a very slow one as far as feeling any kind of feeling or relationship in talking to Mary. Even when I, I, I do things in her honor, many times God doesn't give me any of these warm feelings or easy conversation, um, and I don't know why, because I, I love her and respect her, and I don't have any difficulty handing everything over to her. But um, that's one of the reasons why I was so excited about this consecration. Because what I would tell Mary every morning when I put on my habit is that, uh, Mary, clothe me with the mantle of your virtues, okay? So that my, my devotion to you can never increase, okay? Especially by imitation. And, um, and I, I think, you know, how, how much did Mary all of a sudden just was a part of my life and part of my conversation and then... I, I just love going up to communion and, and having her with me to honor and, and bring the angels and saints along so that he can be duly given the um, respect and, and adoration that he so deserves. So um, don't be afraid, okay, if you don't have the feelings or the emotions. They're great when they're there. But devotion is that willingness to hand everything over and to follow her lead whether we feel it or don't feel it. And um, again, her, if you look at all of her apparitions, she's always pointing us to God. And in recent times, though, she has asked us to honor her heart. But it's only because she knows that when we honor her heart, we are able to then um, have all the greater graces given to us from God, who wants her heart honored. And when he sees it honored, it's almost honoring him doubly. 
Okay, and so um, when we talk about the fact that there's going to be the triumph of the heart of Mary, this is the, the promise of Fatima, okay, um, at some point, what, was, what is that triumph of her heart? But that the heart of Jesus, okay, will reign in this world and in, and every, in every one of our hearts. So we'll be making this act of consecration. The formula is, is not um, a very strong one, in the sense if I compare it to the formula that was used by St. Louis de Montfort or by St. Maximilian Kolbe. But if we enter into this prayer, it was uh, composed by John Paul II at the, for the shrine when he visited Our Lady of Guadalupe. And since we've been making this one under her mantle, we'll be making that use of that particular one. And I believe I sent to copy to all of you? Maybe I didn't. I'll try to send that tonight if I didn't, that you can look at it. If you have your book, it's in the back of it. All right. So um, again, I will be doing that consecration at 1.30 on Saturday.